I will discuss polar response measurements with a goniometer. In particular, I will talk about two coefficients characterizing rough surface reflections, and I will claim that it can be dangerous to give the scattering coefficient all attention and to assume that scattering characterizes rough surface reflections. Introduced here is a bounding relationship between scattering and diffusion that I hope will lead to investigation of geometric room model scattering algorithms. I will talk about how knowledge of only the scattering coefficient of a rough surface can place a limit on possible diffusion performance. I intend to keep the equations to a minimum and to keep the discussion more general than a mathematical review of the coefficients would allow. Measurement is made by illuminating the sample and extracting the reflected impulse response. The scattering coefficient is determined by calculating the proportion of energy in the reflection that lies outside of the specular zone. The diffusion coefficient is a measure of sound pressure uniformity across the microphone arc. Note that measurement is dependent on the specular zone width, which is determined by a sample width and the source distance. This is unfortunate, but it's something we have to live with. Polar responses are measured from sound pressure level of surface reflections, measured for, say, every five degrees. The blue polar response here is typical of a flat plate reflector, and the red is typical of a reasonably well-performing diffuser. Now let's compare some polar responses and the resulting scattering and diffusion. The red responses are shown for some sample at some frequency, with the blue response showing a flat reflector of the same size at that same frequency. The first sample is a good diffuser with a relatively uniform response. The sample leaves enough energy in the specular zone to allow a uniform spread. It doesn't remove all of the energy out of the specular zone, so the scattering isn't completely maximized. The second sample is largely specular. It's a poor diffuser because it displays poor scattering. The third example is an excellent scatterer, but does not distribute evenly the energy that it removes from the specular zone. It is a poor diffuser because it suffers from specular zone redirection. We see scattering is necessary for good diffusion, at least some scattering, but it is not sufficient. The question now is, if I know a scattering coefficient, is there an upper bound on the diffusion coefficient that the surface may attain? The answer is yes. To find such a bound, we first construct a two-valued, maximally diffuse polar response that has a given scattering coefficient. Shown here is a polar response with a large scattering coefficient, suppose maybe 90%, and with a constant value in the specular region and a constant value outside the specular region, I claim that this is the maximally diffuse or most even polar response that 90% scattering can buy. Here is such a two-valued response with a small scattering coefficient, say 10%. If the sound pressure level outside the specular zone is constant, and that inside the specular zone is also constant, then I claim that this polar is the most diffuse polar that has this particular scattering coefficient, say 10%. This seems intuitive, but it should be proved. And I do have a proof, which may be published at some point in the future. Now that we're confident that this polar has the highest diffusion coefficient possible for this given scattering value, we can calculate the diffusion coefficient as a function of the scattering, s, and we have our bounding relationship. Now, the bound must be parameterized in terms of the number of microphones in the specular zone, ms, and the total number of microphones, m. Writing a function, say, omega, a quadratic function of scattering s with polynomial coefficients given in terms of the numbers of specular and total microphones, then the diffusion coefficient is bounded above by this rational function of omega. The proof may be published as well, but let's have a let's have a look at what this bound looks like. For a rough surface with energetic scattering coefficient s, the diffusion coefficient must fall under the bounding curve shown here. Note it is sure to fall well below this loose bound as it is constructed using a two-valued polar response that is not likely to be attained. Also note that the diffusion bound maximum of unity falls where the scattering coefficient is equal to the proportion of microphones outside the specular zone. This is exactly as it should be. It's physical. 
which we can see if we consider a perfectly uniform or semicircular polar response with diffusion coefficient of 1. The scattering coefficient is calculated from the proportion of the area sectors outside the specular region, which is exactly the proportion of microphones in the non-specular zone. If this proportion of non-specular mics is changed, then the diffusion bound changes in turn. This dependence on specular zone width is a property of diffusion measurement, and since it is here to stay, it's just something we have to live with. Now let's consider a sinusoidal scatterer. This sample suffers from the aforementioned specular zone redirection, and if all I know is the scattering, I can expect a diffusion coefficient anywhere up to this dashed bound. But the diffusion of this sample is negligible. Now consider RPG's 4 inch skyline diffuser. The scattering coefficient is seen to be comparable to that of the sinusoid, but they are far from comparable diffusers. It's important to be aware of, of the inadequacy of the scattering coefficient alone to completely describe rough surface reflections. Any design that has only the scattering coefficient to characterize a surface will not treat these two surfaces differently. This is especially important to keep in mind when a design uses Lambert's cosine law to distribute non-specular reflections, as any polar response constructed from this law is necessarily two-valued. Perhaps a modified diffusion coefficient might serve as an indicator of confidence in Lambert's treatment of a surface's reflections. There is, however, no coefficient that can substitute for a polar response. I would like to know what consultants and geometric algorithm designers think of these ideas, so please feel free to contact me with questions and feedback.